for questions and answers. We're going to add Pat's video in a little bit. Any questions, you can add them off to the side. And um, we're going to start off with a few questions, and we're going to start with Kelsey. Um, did you have any virtual offering, offerings before COVID, and um, do you think they'll become part of your business model after everything is over and done? Um, I did, not in the way that I do now. Um, I, w I do one-on-one -on -one coaching for small businesses, coaches in the health and wellness field, and other meditation teachers, so that's always been virtual for me. Um, where the big innovation came has been um, creating ongoing offerings for people to meditate with me online, which I was doing 100% in person prior to this, whether that was for corporations or private groups. So I plan on keeping my online meditation classes going. And then as things become safe to open up again, also include those in-person offerings as well, because there's just something that you can't replace about being in person with people. Absolutely. Um, and Pat, a question for you. Mm -hmm. um, how do you balance the practice of your business and the management side of that when you're physically engaged with your clients every day? Um, do you? Oh, well, actually, right now, I have four other physical therapists that work for me. So I'm actually not seeing that many patients. Uh, we're seeing about um, 60 or 70 percent of our patients virtually and about 30 percent of them in the clinic. So I'll see maybe a, just a couple of patients a week. And yes, re re redoing the website, redoing all of our operations, keeping up with legislation and finding PPE. And it's, uh, it's a busy, it's like a three month makeover after building, spending 20 years building the business. Um, question for you. If someone to, wanted to learn more about Reiki, um, where do you recommend they start? Well, there certainly are association websites and books people can read, but most people really just want to know enough to be comfortable to come in for a session. So I would actually just suggest they go to my website, which is thesacredways.com, because what I try and go through for people is what is the history of Reiki, what happens during a session, what sort of issues can it help with, research about the field, reviews. So certainly if they want more than that, I can send them to websites. I can recommend books. But again, most people just want basic information. And I, and again, my website, thesacredways.com will give them a lot of information before they come in. Excellent. Um, Kelsey, a question for you. Um, uh, for someone like me, uh, meditation is a bit of a mystery. Um, what would someone expect the first time they, they visit Calm Meditation? So if you join one of my group meditations for all, which is live and happening on Zoom three times a week, that program is going to be breath work. So we start just with understanding how manipulating our breath can actually calm our nervous system down. And then we move into a guided visualization, which is uh, if you've ever looked up meditations on say Headspace or YouTube, you will have been guided through a process. And there's a handful of different processes that I go through depending on how experienced my group is. I have all levels most of the time. So I try to keep it super friendly and easy. And then we move into affirmations, which um, are statements that you make in the mind such as I am surrounded by abundance, right? And maybe your analytical brain doesn't recognize that as 100% true in your life. But what we're doing is we're giving our brain an opportunity to think a new thought, to forge a new thought pattern. So we just practice through that. And we end with gratitude, which is one of the practices that I shared on the video with you guys. So that's what we do in my live class, but you also have the opportunity to, if you want to play around on your own, I do have pre-recorded meditations that you can get um, from my website, uh, meditatewithkelsey.com. And those pre-recorded meditations combine breath work. You can just try one thing or you can kind of play with a couple of different guided uh, meditations on your own. So you can kind of get a feel for my style before you make the leap into joining me <laughs> in person. <Great>. In person. <laughs> um, Pat, a question for you. Um, what are the most common work-related injuries that you saw before the situation we're in? And how has that changed with people working from home? Um, yeah, I probably should introduce myself also. I'm yeah, this is... <laughs> Anderson Health Physical Therapy. Um, 
you know, it's pretty much the same. Um, most injuries we see are what we would call overuse injuries, which is wear and tear that is related to previous injury, poor postural habits, um, not moving. Um, and that is worsened somewhat during, uh, for some people, during um, stay-at-home order. People are working from home, um, not necessarily always with the best chair or, or workstation set up. Um, so what's nice is when we're working with people virtually, we're actually able to look at their home and help make um, suggestions for, um, again, the ergonomic setup, making sure their, you, their chair is adjusted as, as good as you can. Um, so again, it, it's, it's kind of the same. We're also starting to see um, people are running so sometimes, um, you know, we've got to kind of get them back to running in a safe, um, slow, but consistent manner. Um, so, yeah, I think I think right now people's bodies are starting to break down a little. We've gone, undergone too much, so much stress. So we try, have to try to find a way to get people safely moving again. Um with people trying new things, uh, Dave, for you, uh, do you find that people are becoming more open to other methods of relief that may be unfamiliar? To them? Uh, yes, I, I do think they are. Um, the people who come to me, I, I'm sure like everyone on this panel, they're stressed or they're in pain or they feel lost in their life. And I don't think they just want medication. And I think that can sometimes be the solution too easily. And I think that they realize that there's something about their lifestyle, about themselves that needs to change for this to go away permanently. So with the um, popularity really of wellness activities, whether it's nutrition, as we talked about today, or yoga or meditation, I think they are looking for and open to ways they can change their lifestyle naturally. So they particularly with Reiki, they don't generally know what it is or understand it. And it's actually a difficult thing to understand, but they're willing to try things that they can do on their own to make things better. So there, I, I do definitely think there's an openness right now. Excellent. All right. And I'm going to ask those of you watching, uh, this is your last chance for call uh, questions with a live Q&A. And then we're going to take a short pause and um, uh, Pat is going to show us how we can help take care of ourselves at home. All right. Um, thank you all so much. I really appreciate you being a part of this. And uh, for those watching, hold on one moment. We'll have another program for you in just a second. Thanks, guys.